This video will explain the concept of foodborne intoxication and how it fits underneath the foodborne illness umbrella. Many ask, what is the difference between foodborne infection, foodborne intoxication, and foodborne intoxication? Well, foodborne infection occurs when a food product is consumed that contains enough quantity of a live pathogenic bacteria that will cause illness within the individual. The live bacteria are the causative agent in the infection, resulting in illness. This is very similar to when you catch a cold or flu. You become infected by a bacteria or a virus. When it comes to a foodborne infection, salmonella is a very common offender. Foodborne intoxication occurs when certain types of bacterial produced toxins of a substantial quantity are contained within a consumed food product that their consumption causes the illness. This most commonly occurs in time temperature abused foods as well as homemade refrigerated herb infused oils, jams and jellies as the toxins are produced during the bacterial growth cycle. Proper cooking or reheating may destroy all of the bacteria, but toxins are much harder to destroy and as such, many types of toxins will persist. Any persistent toxins are then consumed. The person becomes ill due to the toxin, with symptoms appearing quickly resulting from foodborne intoxication. To help you remember this, alcohol consumption, which is treated like a toxin by the body, will also make an individual sick if too much is consumed. The difference between infection, intoxication, and intoxication is based upon whether the bacteria that are ingested are active bacteria that are also capable of producing toxins. If so, and the bacteria are ingested in sufficient quantities to replicate, then during the bacterial growth stages, they will produce toxins resulting in illness. This is what makes intoxication different. It involves both the ingestion of live active bacteria, like infection, but those bacteria also produce toxins during their replication, causing intoxication. Understanding the difference is important since intoxication is the combination of foodborne infection and foodborne intoxication. When bacteria are in the log phase, they replicate at an exponential rate. They are doubling in quantity given a certain amount of time. Some bacteria, such as E. coli, can double every 20 minutes. If there were not limitations to this phase, the Earth would be covered in E. coli in under 36 hours. Such rapid expansion can have the effect of pushing out or destroying any helpful or symbiotic bacteria in the gut. As the pathogenic bacteria continue to thrive, enterotoxin continues to be produced, with some endotoxin being released as some of the bacterial cells rupture and die. Major organ systems within the body, such as the kidneys, can be impacted depending upon the severity and the length of time the condition exists and the amount of toxins produced. Certain strains of E. coli, Campylobacter jejuni, Clostridium perfringens, and Clostridium botulinum are just a few of the bacterial types that can be responsible for these conditions. Because foodborne intoxication is related to the consumption of live bacteria, it is also a foodborne infection. And due to toxins being actively produced within the body, including some that would not have survived proper cooking, the toxins create illness resulting in foodborne intoxication. This term allows for the acknowledging that live bacteria were consumed and that they were capable of producing toxins within the intestinal tract. All three of these foodborne conditions are considered foodborne illnesses and foodborne poisoning. To quickly recap, intoxication is when infection or the consumption of live bacteria which creates illness and intoxication when toxins produced by those same bacteria are also creating illness at the same time. In order for intoxication to occur, active pathogenic bacteria capable of producing toxins must have been consumed and they must be able to replicate. During replication, exotoxins are released. They are a protein-based toxin produced as a byproduct of replication and metabolism. Since proteins can be denatured by heat, they can be destroyed by cooking. Try to remember exotoxins as exit toxins. They exit the cell while it is still alive. 
When bacterial cells die, also known as cell lysis, endotoxins are released into the surrounding area as remnants and particles left over from the bacterial cell. In order to keep the terms exotoxin and endotoxin straight, we will use the same door as before. This time, the wall has been broken down to represent a dead, broken up cell. Now, try to remember that endotoxins are released at the end of the cell's life cycle. These are lipopolysaccharide-based toxins, which are also heat-stable. They are part of the cell structure, and since they are heat-stable, they are resistant to cooking. So, if food is cooked to and held at proper temperatures, most bacterial threats can be mitigated. However, endotoxins, if present within the food prior to cooking, can survive proper temperatures and can still be a threat. RDStudy.com video tutorials are produced and owned by Nutrition News Network, LLC. Any copying, reuse, or redistribution, in full or in part, for any purpose without the written consent of Nutrition News Network, LLC, is prohibited. All rights reserved.